Today's Factorio video is another needlessly specific discussion of a very small part of a speedrun base. Uh, this is a concluded speedrun for Rocket Rush Death World Marathon, which I might be the only person thinking about this, which means I get to do all the design work myself, which I enjoy. Uh, like, there used to be beacons over here. Uh, we kind of cut the oil processing. LDS is finished. Um, so the state of the base is a little bit weird because it's not producing because we're done. Um, the expensive recipes in marathon mode uh, of Death World Marathon are why there's so much plastic going into the LDS and why there are so many coils assemblers going into the green chips. The thing I wanted to talk about today was this particular layout of buffer at the end of all of the smelter columns. We use more or less this pattern for all of the smelting that we do kind of there's a couple adjustments we'll get to i like it because it's pretty straightforward which means uh which is important because i've got to build this thing from memory as fast as possible um it balance it lane balances the output which is nice and then we can get like one and a half belts of copper or iron through this particular splitter um Balances, well, buffers are not really a thing that are super important in Factorio outside of some mods and also some speedruns. So let's do some speedrun specific stuff about why we would want to buffer this at all. Um, it's very similar to wave defense. Rocket Rush has this thing where because we're going towards one rocket, we've got to figure out how to build all of the green chips we need for all of the modules and blue chips for the RCUs to get a rocket into the air as fast as possible. And similar to wave defense, the way we do that is, yeah, these, these lanes are from starter patches and we want to mine all that as fast as possible because there's a massive copper constraint for green chips. Uh, put all the copper in buffers that we're not using so we can get it later because we're still constrained by copper. And then there's this weird speedrun specific kind of evolution of how we expect these this copper to be used. Uh, so the, kind of the first late game construct, well the first mid game construction is kind of eight tier one eight tier two assemblers making coils and two making green chips which is a good ratio for expensive mode with the productivity modules in this is limited by the rate at which we are crafting green chips and this whole thing together will use 0.72 of a belt of copper which is less than one belt so hopefully some of that is going into the buffer um, later once we've done petrochem we can add another four coils assemblers over here to go and make red chips and modules which we've also cut because speedrun is finished when we do that this entire thing here is at something like 1.12 belts of copper so we're already pulling from the buffer um, later on when we've got modules we upgrade the green chips assemblers for more productivity bonus and at that point this assembler is kind of idle sometimes and we're limited by the rate at which we're making coils um, with with all of that and with all of these running we have 12 assemblers on coils which is 1.2 belts of copper uh, which is also pulling from the buffer uh, so also that's not sustainable from two patches from two lanes of starter copper smelting so fortunately we go and outpost a bunch of copper that's the thing that happens and one of the things i like about this pattern is yeah these two are built before the copper outpost these ones are built after this is the state after petrochem and then we when we build these other coils um yeah total number of tier 2 assemblers 42 there are two we downgraded at the bottom this is normally 40 tier 2 assemblers making coils which is exactly four belts of copper uh, which is the two starters which we support with the outposted copper and then like these two belts get blueprinted with the same buffer and then there's a very small adjustment which is pretty easy to do by hand um, to collect the runoff from those two belts into the into the original two like blocks of green chips and red chips which make all of that per perfectly balanced which is nice and then there's also some more and some lds which is a mess um, the lds kind of goes up later which is why it's good to buffer um yeah that's basically all of it. Oh wait, there's um this prioritization as well. Yeah. So the way this prioritization works, it pushes everything, it pushes all the iron away from them all. So we use the same buffer layout for both iron and copper, which I like, because that makes things easy. This is actually the entire mall. There's sometimes another assembler here, but there's not much more on this. Um it's fine. Yeah, and that means as soon as we drop 
these green chips after we come back from the copper outpost this prioritization which we've all already got automatically pushes all the iron down there and prioritizes the green chips which are the speedrun win condition over them all which we kind of don't need late game anyway um so yeah that was i just wanted to do a quick thing on that because if this is done well then none of these parts are on screen particularly long and there's this weird speedrun specific thing of considering how quickly you're loading the buffers and then the various evolutions of how quickly we are draining the buffers and making sure all of that works that that i thought would be good to put next to each other uh, as part of the, like documenting the design i guess anyway um speedruns rocket rush death world marathon that's that might be a thing